So welcome everybody, welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is the March 10th, 2022. And the topic for this evening is human evolution. Last week, uh, the topic for last week was the human experiment. And I talked a little bit about some of our DNA um, contributors and how there was a plan to put like all 12 or, or so like all these different DNA within human beings so that we can actually bring all of those different races together and um, transcend all the differences to get all of the best of the from the all the different races to create a very um i would say a, a, a much more cohesive consciousness within human beings so i'm still kind of talking about something about the that that human ex experiment however i'm approaching it from a different perspective so that's why the topic tonight is called human evolution. I actually want to talk about the evolution of consciousness. How is that? How, how does that work? Um, so let's, let's kind of begin from the beginning and um, or as, as, as far out in the beginning as I can make sense of. So, so from the beginning, there is creator source. Creator source is really the, and I'm not sure with how to say it, whether it is a being, but it is, or, or the other way is to think of it as a void, is that it, everything and nothing exists at the same time. And so within, within this create a source or the void, there comes a, a thought. The thought is that it wants to know itself. So when that thought came about, the, the first beings that were created were the Elohim. So the Elohim is, the word actually means gods, gods as in the plural form of God. So that's what the Elohim are, is that they are really the, um, the creator beings uh, that, you know, as, as much as any that we can think of as creator beings, they are both the architects and also the, the, the consciousness of cre what creation is about. And they actually orchestrated all the, the creation of the rest. And that's why for the graphics, I have the, um, this image of um, a snowflake. Because if you look at a slow the snowflake, you can see most of them that you can kind of make out that they have six spokes. So the, the six spokes is really um, the image of the seed of life, which is about the six Elohim that, was, that were created from creator source. And when the six Elohim were created, they split and bec became 12. So there were 12 Elohim and all 12 of them are the architects of the rest of creation. So the Elohim created, the first beings that the Elohim created were, were elementals. So what do I mean by elementals? So fire, air, water, earth and the fifth element is really ether ether is really the 
the connection between those four elementals. So these four elementals, fire, air, water, and earth. Earth mean not really like the planet earth, but meaning minerals itself, the, the, the substance earth. So all these four elementals, they combine and they you know, split apart. They, they you know, went through millions and billions of years to create at the, at the end of that, create the, all the galaxies, the solar system, stars, planets, and all of that came to be from the, the body of these four elementals, or I should say five elementals as well. So after the galaxies and the planets and all those came to be, then after another eons, like really long time, the planets becomes ready. Ready meaning that its consciousness starts to become um, self-aware and they are ready to actually create, to be the creator themselves. So they create by um, hosting living beings on them. So some of the living beings, the, the first living beings that planets hosted were single cell organisms. And then later on, they become um, more complicated, more complex, and then plants come about all different sorts, and then animals, and then all kinds of different animals, and, and, and so on, and so on. And if you kind of look at the, the progression. So create a source is void. From the void, there is all these giant um, beings called the Elohim and the Elohim kind of subdivided and created the elementals. And the elementals after eons, they subdivided and became galaxies and then galaxies become planets and then planets begets um, other living beings. So it's, it's kind of like each thing um, split itself up to become, to create the next and then split itself up to create the next and the next and the next. So that's how creation works is that we split up. And when we get to the, when a being, um, a conscious, creation becomes aware enough they split they split and then create other beings from them and that is the process of creation and now before I go any further on I actually just want to talk a little bit about the um the process of evolution let me see is this the one yes so in terms of a process of the evolution of consciousness, there are three stages. The three stages are um, mental, emotional, and physical. So in order for a, a being to become fully conscious, and be able to understand the mind of the whole universe. The Elohim has mapped out that these are the, the, the system stages and methods of evolution of consciousness. So the nine initiations is, let's say for, for mental, the, so the three stages, mental, emotional, and physical. And for each of those, let's say for mental, there are, again, another subdivision of three sets of three initiations within the mental stage that a being needs to go through in order for it to understand through those nine initiations. And once it gets to get through all those nine initiations, then 
it comes to being able to synthesize uh, or synthesize that all of that experience. And when they have synthesized that mental, all those mental initiations, then it becomes, the being becomes aware in terms of the, the, the mental stage. And when they become aware and really know who they are and what they can do, then it goes to the next, which is they create new reality by splitting themselves. So if you look at it, it is really nine and then synthesize is the 10. And then a new reality is really the 11th process. And there are three of these 11 process. And that's why 33, and we, if you just add up all those 11 mental processes, 11 emotional processes, and 11 physical processes that a being have to go through all of these 33 initiations of processes after a being are able to go through all of these stages then they would start to understand the mind of the universe and how the universe works. And they start to be able to become like God. Own, they will be able to own their true potential and be able to use their true potential. So this is really the path of the um, evolution of consciousness that the Elohim mapped out. So now that they have found a way. So how can they make that, create that in reality? Because part of this, one of the stage is really physical. So there has to be physicality, whereas the Elohim themselves, they are not physical. They're not really physical. So how can they create that process? They can't really go to third dimension, which is where things become physical because they themselves are eternal beings. Even if they become physical, even they take on a physicality, their physicality would be eternal and all knowing. So they, it's, it really defeats the purpose. They won't be able to um, create beings that would actually go through these process, just going to the third dimension straight away. So they created a step where they have, they have to go through the fourth dimension in order to be able to go to the third dimension. So why is that so? What's, what's the benefit of the fourth dimension? So within the fourth dimension, if you look at the next um, slide, Within the fourth dimension, there is built in a four pillars. So kind of four pillars that, um, that is available in, within the fourth dimension. So they are, the four pillars are expression, experimentation, integration, transcendence. So those four, by going through the fourth dimension, the most important change and opportunity is that it, the, the beings will have to die. So transcendence translate to death. So death is a, a necessary um, step in this process of growing our consciousness because when we can die, then we can create that um, ability to be able to experience all of the other things, um, experience different emotions, because if everything is all smooth and you're all knowing, there really is nothing that can stress you out because you're all knowing you never dies and you are create a being so you can create whatever you want. Whereas if you go, if you um, are bounded by these four pillars, so you have to go through a birth process and then you go through the experimentation which is reproduction um, and then there's aging which is the integration and then the transcendence, the death. So what we, the way that the 
Elohim are able to use these four pillars is that they each um, each incarnation, each life, each beings that wants to go to the third dimension to start to go through the evolution of consciousness, they are forced or they are uh, structured in such a way that you have to kind of know what it is that you you want to experience. So you have to get the idea. And then through that idea, you go into, through the fourth dimension into third dimension. So you go through the birth process. And so that is a kind of a positive because you are going into, so you are expressing who you wanted to be in that incarnation. And then once you're there, you experiment and you, um, you reproduce what it is that you want to experience. And also the idea of um, reproduction as in engaging in sex so that you can create other versions of yourself who would be able to survive um, after you're gone. And then so that's the experimentation part. And then the integration is when you have experimented enough, you, you go through the, the an aging process and also the integration process as well. You, not just you physically, but you mentally, you kind of go through that integration. And then at the end, you have to let go because this, this um, incarnation is done. So it's the letting go part. The transcendence part is the death process. And it is because of this death process that allows you to go through this many, many, many times so that you can experiment um, all you want to experiment and also reproduce and create other versions that has other other versions of yourself that has um, slightly different viewpoint from you so that they can go on and have their own experimentation, integration, and then transcendence and all of that. So it's, it's kind of like creating a, a fractal um, version of yourself. So this is what the, the fourth dimension was able to um, allow the the Elohim beings to do. So now that they have found the, the, the way to do it, they started to, um, the Elohim started to find out, okay, so this is a way to do it. So, so now where do we do it? And so they determined from the, the, the sixth dimension, because the in, from the sixth dimension, they can actually see all of creation. So the Elohim from the sixth dimension, they see that within the, the, um, the Pleiades, um, the star system of Pleiades, there are many, many stars within the, the Pleiades, but there are specifically 12 different stars within the Pleiades system that are aligned with each of the 12 Elohim so that those stars is really portals that allow the Elohims to come through to go to the third dimension through the fourth dimension. So they took those portals and they um, went to the Pleiades star system. And that's what the Pleiadians, that's why the, they are the Pleiadians were created. And that was the, the, the first beings that came through in, in, these, in this quadrant of the universe is through the Pleiadians. And the Pleiadians, because the Elohims went through the portals, to the Pleiades. So the Pleiadians are really the, the star beings that is the most 
um, ethereal and um, not quite physical yet. And they are the ones, the Pleiadians really are the ones that is responsible for teaching all the other beings how to grow spiritually and to um, transcend matters as well. So there, the Pleiadians is really, their job is to guide the spirit within the body. And then after the Pleiadians, there are um, other places that the Elohim were able to create different races and the other ones that are the more important to in, in terms of earth, um, in, in terms of the evolution of the earth consciousness is concerned is really the Arcturians. The Pleiadians are really good at growing spirituality and to guide the spirit inside the body. And the Arcturians are more, by the time they get to be, uh, they get to Arcturus, the, the star Arcturus, the Arcturians are more grounded because they are not as, they are really not as ethereal and, um, spirit-like as the Pleiadians. The Arcturians are much more grounded and they are really skilled at teaching us how to embody the all that spiritual power. So that's what the Arcturians are skilled at doing. So with those two, um, the Pleiadians and the Arcturians, they started to put their eyes out, focus their intent, their attention to onto Earth because Earth went through some of these these phases, and they are um, starting to find that Earth is becoming ready to host um, really conscious beings, um, maybe, maybe not quite human beings yet, but Earth is getting ready or showing signs that it is ready to hold those beings. So they started to, the Pleiadians, both the Pleiadians and the Arcturians started to visit Earth. And we're talking, um, it's still billions of years before the, the coming of human beings, but the, the Pleiadians and the Arcturians were starting to go visit Earth and observe because you can't really, um, each planet and especially Earth itself, it's, if you think of um, our, our own body, our own body has the ability to fight off foreign, um, invaders like bacteria that are not um, that are not good for us. So foreign materials, it will it will start to fight and kill them off, and that's what our immune system is. And so the Earth itself has that ability as well. Is that it? Anything that the Earth does not like anything that is foreign, it will tend to um, have ways to be able to kill those foreign, whether they are intruders or kind of like the Pleiadians and Arcturians were guides. But from the Earth's point of view, they are still foreign. So that's, that's why the Pleiadians and the Arcturians has to visit Earth a few times, many times, and also different periods to observe what kind of um, living beings on earth is ready to receive the teachings that they are ready to give to us, that the guidance that they are uh, trying to give to us. So through the many, many um, different eons, and there are different, I would say, different um, foundations 
that were guided by the Pleiadians and the Arcturians and also the Syrians as well to, to kind of guide the evolution of human consciousness on earth. So there are four, there are kind of four, um, four foundations. So the first one, which is the Nemnius. The Nemnius is a race of beings that are, they are giants. They are giants and they came from a really cold planet. And when they visited Earth around a billion years ago, their, their, um, their directive is really to come here and start to encode Earth with the, the knowledge and the um, experiences from other star systems. So what the Nemnias do is they stayed at the um, North Pole. So they really stayed, they actually went to the South Pole as well, but they stayed in the really cold areas of Earth. At that time, there are other, maybe not um, human beings yet, but there are other versions, there are other living beings. They are um, animals there. And these Nemnias, they don't really, um, they keep to themselves, let's, let's put it that way. So they keep to themselves, they only stay at the, um, the, the cold areas on earth. And after a while, as the, as the ice age, the ice age comes, the Nemnias were able to travel further south um, in, in the, the earth on earth. However, they still, their, um, their, uh, their role is really to, come in and hold and encode knowledge into the, the ice and the snow of earth. Because ice and snow is really, if you look at them, they are really water, but in a, uh, a solid form. So water, whether it is in solid form or um, whether it is in a liquid form, holds memories holds all these knowledge and it's so that's why the nemnias were able to use vibration because they are they are very skilled at using vibration vibration as in they can either sing or use humming so that's what i mean by vibration in order to store and transmit all the different knowledge of the, the stars to be encoded into the earth and the ice of earth. So that's what the Nemnirs are here to do. And when the ice age start to recede, then that's when the next group comes. The next group is really the reptilians. The reptilians came to earth and um, while the Nemnirs are here to give us knowledge, star knowledge, knowledge of history of, uh, and also experiences from other star systems and also about um, vibration, all those more mental abilities the, what the reptilians give for Earth is that the reptilians are a species that knows how to survive. They have been, um, they are the survivors in the, in the galaxies. They can go to pretty much any planet, no matter how rough the, and how uh, hostile the, the environment may be. They have gathered the ability to be able to survive there, whatever the harsh environment are. And they, that's what they bring to earth 
they gave us our ability to survive, the knowledge of survival, and the survival by um, also giving us fear as well, because it is fear that helps us to how should I say it? Fear really is one of the um, the 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 gifts from the reptilians for us to maximize our opportunity for survival and the reptilians also um, have learned that emotions is very powerful and when you are able to hold emotions be able to control emotions you are able to harness your own internal energy so that's also what the reptilians um, taught us and so that's why reptilians the 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 symbol of the snake you can find that around a, a lot of places in different cultures is that the reptilians really the symbolized by the snake is really about knowledge the, even though the Nemnirs were the, the, um, the first bringer of knowledge, but they are more knowledge about how the universe is and those. But the reptilians bring us knowledge about how to survive, which is really important for the, um, the species that are, the earth is going to host human beings eventually, because being able to survive the earth itself. Earth itself is not an easy environment because you can think of the earth is um, this ice age and then it becomes hot. And then there are the, the earth itself. There will be volcanoes, there are um, earthquakes, all of those those different environmental changes so when you need to when a being when a species needs to live on the surface of earth itself then they really need to be able to adapt to whatever it is that the the, the weather the environment is thrown is throw at you and so that's what the reptilians bring us they actually also brought us the knowledge of how to um, grow to harvest crops instead of so we'll be able to human beings or living beings um, would be able to start to instead of always being nomads they can actually start to stay in one place so all of these different knowledge is from the reptilians but then even the reptilians is just a face even the reptilians is just a face so the next face is when the the, the earth is really ready for after the, the Nemnirs has prepared the earth and the reptilians has brought to earth the ability to, to survive, then the next, the next phase is the vegans or the civilization of Mu that we know of. So if you look back at the difference between the Nemnirs and the reptilians, you can think of the Nemnirs as being more mental and, um, and also more positive as well. Because they, the, the knowledge, or I should say the, the, the kind of knowledge that they bring to, to us is is really can be considered as positive or um, positive knowledge. Whereas the reptilians, they, they also brought us knowledge as well, but it's the knowledge through negativity for, because fear is really a 
a negative emotion and um, survival, all of these very important skills that we need initially as our consciousness is, is evolving. But these are really the negative kind of contribution to our evolution. And now when we switch back to the vegans, the vegans, you can think of vegans as being the positive beings again. So the positive beings, the vegans, they are, I think they are closer to the, the Pleiadians um, because they are more um, like the, the, they're more ethereal. So the, let me uh, find, uh, yes. So the vegans, they are more ethereal. So they are very spiritually evolved. They are very spiritually evolved race. And they came to earth through the portal of the um, earth. I think, I think it's about around uh, a billion years ago. That's when the moon crashed onto earth. And when the moon crashed onto earth, there are minerals on earth. Uh, uh, sorry, excuse me. These minerals from the moon mixed in with minerals on earth that actually created, um, was able to create water. So, and it just so happens that earth is one of those planets that can hold water because some of the other planets, they may be too hot or they may be too um, gaseous. So they can't really hold water in a way that earth can. So when the moon crashed onto earth, they created a big crater and also created a big portal, which is where the vegans came through. So the, the portal that's created is um, locationally or geographically you can it's it is really where hawaiian hawaii new zealand and easter island so it's kind of like a um that those three um islands is is really or those three sets of islands are really the the perimeter of where the civilization of mu and where the vegans settled so the Vagans is from the, the Liran constellation and they, um, from, the, from Lyra, they are really the keepers of the water. So there are water on, on, on Lyrans. So the Vagans knows how to store all their knowledge into the waters of earth. And the vegans are angelic-like beings. And they're described as kind of, um, they have long faces. They are tall. They're kind of tall, but not giants. They are maybe taller than the, the, the regular humans, but not giants, not to the proportion of giants. So they have this, these long faces and slim bodies and they, um, they kind of, they don't really walk like human beings as well because they, they are so angelic, like they kind of float. They kind of look like they, they, they float rather than walk like human beings. So you can really tell just by looking at them that they are not from, they're not locals, they're not from earth. So what the vegans brought us is that they are telepathic um, beings. So they communicate with one another through vibrations. 
and they have these big hot chakras. And because they are so telepathic that they don't really need to use words. And so they are all vibrational. They communicate with one another, with the other um, vegans through tele uh, telepathy and also through vibrations from their heart. So they are able to live even if they are spread all over different islands, they're able to communicate with one another and know what everyone else is thinking. So they're kind of like a hive mind. So this is really what they, they brought to our DNA, is this knowledge of um, telepathy, all these abilities of, and also the um, ability to understand vibration, to be able to get information through vibration, to understand um, communications, um, mental, mental images, through mental images and, and mental thinking, just from, just through vibration, we'll be able to get all of these information. And that's really what the vegans brought to um, the human DNA. And so the, the Nemnias, the reptilians, and also the vegans as well, they, like, especially the, 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 the Nemnias and the reptilians, they came here, but they, they, their, their understanding is that they are not to stay here. They, so earth is, is not really their domain. They understand that they are only here to guide us. So the Nemnias are here to guide us. The reptilians are here to guide us and also the vegans were here to guide us. And so from the, um, the vegans, they started the civilization of Mu. And so the civilization of Mu is, um, is really the first time that um, the that the human civilization has more of a closer working relationship or, or teacher learner relationship. Because the Nemnias and the reptilians, are, um, the Nemnias especially, they, they don't really like to um, mingle with, with um, other other beings, uh, this, the reptilians, um, a little bit better, but still they liked to keep them to themselves and they don't have too many, they, they don't really don't have too many uh, dealings with human beings. But uh, the vegans are really the, the first time that civilizations as we know it is start kind of started by the vegans um, and they created this Mu civilization. And that's when they really um, coach the, the humanoids and that earth is able to, um, earth approved uh, through earth, earth's approval because earth, um, if Earth does not like a being, they would it, Earth itself would reject it and bring different things to kill the these the, the, the beings. But there are beings, uh, living beings on Earth that actually Earth starts to accept as, and so that's what the the vegans were here to do is to coach the beings on earth and they created this Mu civilization and the Mu civilization was started, um, I forgot how long ago, but um, after the reptilians were 
kind of forced out because the the vibration of Earth starting to started to change. So the reptilians and the Nemnias, they did not completely go away. There are still remnants of them that existed on Earth, but because the um, vibration of Earth changed, so the Nemnias and the reptilians, they went underground. And that's when the vegans and was able to start the, the Mu civilization and the Mu civilizations um, really start to were able to grow until the Anunnakis came. So the Anunnakis is um, they came from a a planet that is within the Orion system. So within the Orion system, the Anunnakis. Um, so who are the Anunnakis? The Anunnakis is really a branch of the reptilians, or I should say the draconians. So the draconians are you know, a branch of the reptilians, but the draconians created the, the Anunnakis. And um, they created the Anunnakis to be a military race. The, um, because the draconians have, they want to conquer a lot of civilizations. So they created the Anunnakis. However, the, um, because of the, the warlike nature of the draconians, so their own planet, they, they really did a lot of damage to their own planet. So their own planet um, become hard to inhabit. So they have to find a different planet to go to. And so they were guided to come to Earth. So why guided to come to Earth? So all of these civilizations, the Nemnirs, the Reptilians, and the Vegans, they were all guided to come to Earth because the, the Elohims, the, the Elohim, um, they have a plan for eventually the human race itself. And in order to prepare Earth um, and the, 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 the coming human race, they decided that, Elohim decided that the, what the Anunnaki's has within them is, is something that is going to um, benefit the evolution of Earth civilization. So the Anunnaki's, when they were seeking out other planets, because they they kind of made their own planet um, a little shaky and to to live on, so they came to Earth. They were guided to Earth. Now the Anunnaki's were, if the Vegans were the positive, if you look at the the Vegans were being the positively influ positive influence from the stars from the the star races, then the Anunnaki. So you can think of them as being the negative influences. They their input to Earth is is really. Um, They are here to galvanize, to, to kind of harden, uh, to, to make human beings stronger because of, of their influence. So the Anunnaki's are, they are military, they, they are really um, strong, and they are also the first out of the, the four star races that have a big influence on the beings on earth, the Anunnaki's are the ones that actually have the intention to stay on earth. They came to, to really interact with earth and also because their own star, their own planet is not doing so well. So they are actually looking for another planet. And so their 
intention at first was, well, we we came here and we are definitely um, we de- their intention is to conquer Earth and to, if not to stay on Earth completely, at least to get all the resources that they can from Earth, because their own planets uh, needed all these different resources in order to make it um, still livable, even though the atmosphere of their own planet is kind of compromised from their own doing. So the Anunnaki's came to Earth and they they really um, seek to control the, the humans to, to mine the, the minerals and to do all the heavy lifting for them. So they weren't really nice to the human beings. However, not all the Anunnaki's were um, really treated earthlings so bad. They're actually, as, as time goes on, there became two factions within the Anunnaki's. There is one faction, which is the Anunnaki's that wants to control and really to milk all the good things that Earth can give and then um, and bring those all those back to their own planet in order to assist them to be able to live, still live on their own planet. And then the other faction is that they understand that, yes, um, the the minerals that they are able to get from Earth would be like the the new supplies that they can get from Earth would be able to sustain their own planet um, so that they can still live on their own planet for a while. However, they the the second faction really understand that their time is on the, their own planet is kind of over and that Earth now is really their new home now. And in order to live on Earth, they have to mix, they have to really um, be able to live through the Earthlings, meaning that to come to, to start to um, mate with the, the earth beings and to create a new race of beings, which is the combination of the Anunnaki's and the earth beings. And through that, be able to live through the human beings rather than control human beings and um, treat human beings badly. This, the other faction actually is have the understanding that they want to live through Earth, the the beings on Earth, and also to treat these new races, the new race of beings, which is a combination of the Anunnaki's and the Earth, as their own children. And so when this new thinking start to come about, that's when the Arcturians start to approach them and um, create a kind of an alliance with the this second new branch of the the, the thinking in, in the Anunnaki system in that they want to create a race a new race which has both the Anunnaki and also the um, the Arcturians uh, DNA and also the humanoids, the the Earth beings as well. So within this new creation, they are able to start this the Atlantis civilization, and so that's what the the Atlantis civilization about. So the Atlantis is not just about the Anunnaki. Um, It's not just about control at first. 
the conception of the Atlantis of of the Atlantis um, civilization is really a a combination of all the what the Anunnaki's who wants to treat this new race as their own children and also the Arcturians who is really here to guide the evolution of the human consciousness and also the earthlings itself which is what earth the planet consciousness itself is willing to accept as its own so Atlantis is really this combination of the three consciousness. And this is what the Atlantis um, civilizations is. So when the Atlantis, when the Anunnaki's transitioned into the Atlantis, into Atlantis civilization, that's when the um, the stars and the, uh, our star parents uh, and also the the federation of planets knows that earth itself is ready for the next phase and when earth itself is ready for the next phase um, then the federation started to let the vegans and the Mu civilization know that the Atlanteans are coming and um, it is really time for them to leave. So most of the, the vegans, because the vegans, they, it is really not in their nature to fight. They are a spiritual being and they understand that as a civilization rise, it will also fall. So most of the vegans um, left they the the Mu civilization kind of um they they really most of the vegans left they didn't really put up a fight at all they just knew that it is really their time and so the um as the Anunnaki's become ready to transition into the Atlanteans uh, into Atlantis, what also the Federation, what they did in order to kick out the Anunnaki's because the Anunnaki's has two factions. One faction is the ones that wants to control and they really um, don't agree with, with uh, the Atlantis um, project. Let's, let's, let's call that the Atlantis project. And so those Anunnaki's, the controlling group, they have no, they, they don't want to relinquish their control. However, the Federation of Planets, what they've done is that they, they asked them nicely, they told them, talked to them nicely, but um, they didn't, the controlling Anunnaki's didn't want to leave. So what they've done is they start to shift the vibration of Earth to the extent that the, the controlling group the the first group the controlling groups cannot um, stand to be on earth anymore they have to actually go into the um, fifth again they actually go into the inner earth because um, inside earth itself it's a different dimension and the nimnias and the reptilians is already some of them um, stayed down there. So the Anunnaki's, when they cannot stay on earth and live on earth, they were still um, not ready to, to leave earth. So they actually went into the inner earth itself. So Part of the Anunnaki's, they went into the inner earth, inner earth. And those that are willing to create this new race, they were able to stay on earth to start to 
um, grow the Atlantis civilization. The Atlantean civilization, um, it's, there is an overlap between the Mu and the, the Atlantis civilization. So the Mu civilization was first and they kind of um, become, became quite, um, they actually became quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they are quite developed. And especially when the Anunnaki's, the, the, the controlling Anunnaki's were kicked off um, and they were, they have to go in, inside earth itself. It actually left the, the, the Mu civilization was able to grow faster. And at that time, the Atlantean um, civilization was just starting. So, and at first the Atlantis civilization was really just very localized on um, this, this part of earth that's it's really near the Canary Islands. It's, um, so you can think of the Azores Island, the Canary Islands and Green Cape, those those three points are really um, just the, the, they are kind of the geographic um, limitation of the, the first Atlantean civilization. So at first Atlantis, they were, because it's a new race. So the, the Arcturians and the Anunnaki's know that they needed to stay in on, on the islands really far away from other civilizations um, in order to keep them safe and also to allow this new civilization to develop and to really come into resonance with earth itself to really have create that connection with earth itself. So that's why while Atlantis started, Mu civilization is really when they become more developed and flowered. And at some point, of course, the, the, the Atlanteans started to become strong enough that they can start to go out um, and to travel into other parts of the earth. And when the Atlanteans become more mature and they are ready to travel the earth, they were guided to go through um, to different portals on earth uh, um, to be exact 12 portals on earth because the 12 portals on earth really maps at the, the 12 portals from the, the 12 star systems around earth and they are really um, where the 12 Elohims is able to filter their consciousness through those portals. So in order for earth beings, the, the Atlanteans to really get all of the um, knowledge from earth and, earth and the stars um, beyond earth itself, it knows to have to go through all those different portals and not just to stay in one place. So when the Atlanteans started to go through those portals, that's when the, um, that's when the Mu civilizations needs to retreat. And most of the Mu civilizations um, start to they, they start to give in. They don't really fight with the Atlanteans. They kind of um, 
cooperated and being incorporated into the Atlantean civilizations, except one, which is the Lemurians. So the Lemurians um, that stayed around um, Australia. So that's, that's the location of, of the Lemurians. So they are because the Lemurians and Atlant so Australia and where um, the Canarian Islands are, they are, if you look at them geographically, they are direct oppositions. And because of that, energetically, there is a, a um, hmm, there is a pool for them to fight each other. So that's why the Lemurians decided to fight rather than to be incorporated into the Atlantean um, civilization. And however, the Atlanteans have superior weaponry. They, their weapons are very different from what we have. So the Lemurians were no match for them and the Lemurians were devastated. And so the Atlantean civilizations is really from the Federation of Planets point of view, the Atlanteans were the ones that were chosen by earth and also by um, the, the Federation our planet itself to guide the development of human consciousness, the evolution of human consciousness to a point where it mm, was supposed to be able to experience all the 33, um, I would say the 33 initiations and processes in order to get to be the point of being um, a conscious, consciously aware of the mind of the universe. But however, that did not take place because um, other things, so the, the other things inter, intervened. So that's when Atlantis somehow also fell. And I'm going to stop here because th this is already a lot. And I just want to pull out the, the, um, the important points within all, this, all of the stories, all of the stories, is that the evolution of consciousness on Earth is, is not random, is not... It's not fair, it's not haphazard at all. It's always been guided. It's always been guided from the Elohim's, uh, from the Elohim's uh, point of view is that it's always been guided. They have a map, they, they have a path. They've mapped up a, a path of evolution of consciousness and they step-by-step step find the ways to get through to Earth, and they've selected Earth as a place where um, a being would be able to experience all the 33 initiations. And that's why Earth is a very special planet. And because of this, this special um, destiny for for Earth itself, that's why the different star, our star brothers and sisters, and came to Earth to to assist us in in our evolution of our consciousness. So the Nemnirs, the Reptilians, the Vegans, and the Anunnakis. So those are the foundation races that really um, assisted human evil, human consciousness evolution. 
if you look at this from this point of view, then um, yes, there the Anunnaki's have not been very nice to us. And some may say that the reptilians are not very good for us either. However, they each have a have something very valuable to contribute to the evolution of the human consciousness. Because without the, the negative influences, we won't be able to go through all of the, the 33 initiations, which is really the, the different initiations of mental from the, the emotional stages and also the physical stages as well. It is this positive and negative. So this duality of going from the positive to the negative and then back to the positive and then negative. So this is really the cycle of evolution. It's not for us to not think of good and bad, um, not to attach that negative is bad and positive is good is that is really a cycle. And in order for energy to cycle, it has to go through the negative polarity to the positive polarity, and then back to the negative and the positive. So all of these positive and negative influences, they all has to come together and be transcended and integrated and experimented and be expressed. So all of those different things have to, is, is part of our, is the part of the evolution of consciousness itself. So that's all I want to cover for this session.